for Guam and Rota. Uh, we're still looking at the possibility of those damaging tropical storm winds of 39 miles per hour or more on Tuesday. However, this possibility is uh, gradually decreasing uh, with the latest trends that we're seeing uh, with 16W. Wind speeds are ultimately expected to decrease Tuesday evening as the entire system of 16W moves to the west of the Marianas. Some changes that we're seeing is the wind speed and direction could widely vary based on location, and that's due to the exact passage of 16W. I'll give you a little bit more information when I show you the track and the next slide. But uh, one thing to keep in mind is the strongest winds are found on the north side of the center of 16W. Uh, those easterly winds that will be buffeting much of the Marianas. Uh, much weaker winds out of the west are found to the south of the center. We're still looking at the potential for some heavy rainfall. Uh, although the overall amounts have been lowered a little bit, we're still looking at the potential for three to five inches of rainfall uh, from, Monday, from tonight into Tuesday night. And, and that could lead to some uh, short-term uh, nuisance flooding, uh, some streams, rivers, and the poor drainage areas. So we're not looking uh, at the, a significant risk of major flash flooding, uh, stuff that would really, I, I think uh, the more notable flood prone areas uh, around the uh, Umatic area, we're not looking to the extreme scenarios at this point, but more of a nuisance flooding that may be more short term on the order of uh, maybe one to two hours. Seas and surf, uh, we're still looking at the seas and surf spiking uh, during the day on Tuesday, up to 15 feet near the center of 16W, uh, and surf will quickly spike up to between 10 and 14 feet on Tuesday with uh, inundation up to two feet um, along the windward facing shores. So for those stronger uh, east winds, those windward facing shores will be those shores on the east side uh, of Guam and the CNMI. So the latest forecast track, this is the forecast track advisory 22, came out this morning at 7 a.m. And compared to yesterday, uh, while we are expecting uh, the track to shift just to the south of Guam or pass just south of Guam, now the track has shifted just a little bit northward uh, so that's going to have implications when you think about uh, those stronger winds to the north, weaker winds to the south. So that could bring some variability, especially for the Guam forecast. Yet for the CNMI, uh, stronger winds out of the east uh, will continue. You also notice on this current track uh, that we see none of the blue shading indicating the damaging tropical storm winds until after 16W has passed to Guam. This is a later, uh, this is indicating a later intensification trend than earlier expected. Uh, yesterday morning, we were looking at a tropical storm uh, around 150 degrees east longitude. That was later shifted a little bit farther westward and then overnight a little farther westward. And now we're seeing it uh, pretty, pretty far to the west of Guam. So that overall bodes, uh, brings good news for Guam and the rest of the Marianas. So the air track uh, showing is still Guam is, is well within the, the kind of the crosshairs of the, the storm motion, uh, but Rhoda is also within that uh, white shaded area, uh, indicating that's where two thirds of the storms uh, uh, transit within that sh white shaded area. Uh, there's a small chance that a storm could go outside of that area, but most storms uh, forecast are within this area of uncertainty. So the satellite, this was uh, from this morning, I've indicated the center of 16W with the L for a low pressure area. Uh, the center uh, was just south of this heavier convection. Uh, yesterday, we saw heavy showers and thunderstorms early in the morning, and, and then they rapidly fell apart. They diminished uh, during the day, and there was practically no, uh, no uh, deep convection showers and thunderstorms in the evening into the overnight hours. Uh, those uh, thunderstorms have redeveloped uh, this morning, uh, but they are starting to show a trend of uh, diminishing uh, even uh, into the midday hour right now. Uh, so that is something to look for. Uh, notice uh, the orange oval. Uh, I, I've kind of uh, included this just to indicate the wind distribution that the stronger winds are found near and north of the center of 16W with much weaker winds on the south side. And these winds flow counterclockwise, so weak west winds and then becoming stronger east winds to the north of the center. 
And uh, so there's a lot of questions right now we've been getting on, on social media. Uh, why are we not dealing with the tropical storm? There's two big reasons that are just uh, kind of looming at us this morning. Uh, one is the dry subsidence air. So on the left, we're looking at the atmospheric moisture. Where you see the yellow, that is indicating a sinking flow in the atmosphere. Sinking air is synonymous with drier conditions. And uh, so that is not good for a tropical cyclone to develop. Uh, but however you see that increased moisture right along the center, and just north of the center, that is indicative of uh, deep convection, a uh, lot of moisture being pumped up into the higher atmosphere, but it is not evenly distributed. So that does not bode, uh, bode well. It does not support intensification, especially in the short term. On the right side, we are looking at the upper level winds. And, uh, and one of the things that we note is that we, we've seen this large upper level low to the east of 16W. Uh, it's also flowing counterclockwise, but that has maintained a strong northeasterly wind that is impinging on uh, tropical depression 16. Uh, with these stronger winds, it, it is very hard for 16 to show any potential for development. So that is what's keeping uh, 16 from developing, and, and that is what is ultimately going to keep our forecast uh, a little bit more on the sub subdued side with less of an expectation for strong winds. So yesterday, uh, we discussed the potential for wind damage. And uh, while I also had highlighted a strong tropical storm category, uh, right now, that, is, that, that possibility is looking uh, pretty much non-existent. Uh, so we're looking at a, a, a slim potential for the tropical storm winds of 39 to 57 miles per hour. So there's still that possibility. And not expected, but possibility. And so I want you to keep that in mind. So what could we see worst case scenario? Uh, we're still looking at uh, some of the, the lighter structures, uh, vegetation could see a little bit of minimum damage, but even that possibility is looking less likely. And finally, uh, as we go to a recap, uh, 16W, is, we're still expecting it to remain weak as it moves through the Marianas. Uh, and what the CPA is expected around midday Tuesday. Now, yesterday, uh, we the forecast track was showing a passage near or just south of Guam. Uh, we're starting to see some trends that could indicate uh, either over Guam, as Advisory 22 showed this morning at 7, or maybe a little bit to the north of Guam. So that will have some uh, repercussions on wind directions. Intensification, uh, there's still signs that intensification is possible, uh, but cert certainly not east of us. So that... That means the National Weather Service, we are less likely uh, to be looking at a tropical storm warning, uh, at least today. Uh, there are several things that we want to see uh, that would, uh, would support, would show intensification. And right now, we don't see that uh, with the continual flaring of uh, showers and heavy thunderstorms. Uh, again, wind distribution is uh, very uneven. Strongest winds remain to the north, weaker to the south. So that could have implications for Guam versus the uh, for, versus Rota, Tinian, Saipan, uh, where there is still the expectation of uh, some gusty showers and thunderstorms. And uh, but ultimately, we're going to watch that. We're going to be watching the trends through the afternoon hours and, and seeing how the subsequent forecast tracks out of, out of Joint Typhoon Warning Center how they nudge north or south, and uh, and then we will be adjusting our forecast accordingly. Our current forecast, uh, we're still looking at a possibility of 25 to 35 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 45 miles per hour uh, based uh, on this morning's advisory. Uh, and that is also uh, relevant to a passage near or just uh, south of Guam. Um, for Saipan, uh, Tinian, and Rota, those winds will be slightly less, but folks on, on the CNMI Islands should still expect gusty showers uh, with winds uh, definitely picking up, perhaps not as strong as what we have indicated here, uh, but we will be updating the forecast accordingly to uh, follow the trends. And, and uh, rem reminder, seas and surf will be spiking on Tuesday and uh, just on Tuesday, and then conditions will improve Tuesday night and Wednesday. We're still looking at that uh, possibility for heavy rain, three to five inches Monday night or tonight through Tuesday night, and that could lead to some uh, short-term uh, nuisance flooding. So right now, 
we have just issued the Intermediate Public Advisory. Uh, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center will issue their new forecast and track, and then we will have our newest advisory out by 2 p.m. And then we'll be updating all, uh, updating all of our local statements. That is the very specific, island-specific detailed uh, forecast, timing, and impacts. Uh, right now for Guam and Rota, since the, uh, these are the only two islands under Tropical Storm Watch, and, and that will be updated every six hours uh, along with the forecast. Uh, for any more information, find us on, on the uh, internet, uh, weather.gov slash gum, and also Facebook and Twitter under NWS Guam. And finally, uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Jenna, and uh, for any questions. Okay, thank you so much for that, Brandon. Uh, on the Line here, we have Brandon with National Weather Service and myself, Jenna Bloss, with Guam Homeland Security Civil Defense. Uh, we're able to answer your questions. We're just going to go around down the list as I see it here. We'll start off first. I did see that note, um, Holly Kuba with K57. Go ahead with your question. To ask uh, with the winds now 25 to 35 miles per hour, gusts of 45 miles per hour, what does that mean for? Uh, schools opening tomorrow? The word is that, you know, we're already work. Uh, the couple high schools already closing today, 1130 a.m. So tomorrow, close tomorrow is what we got. Uh, are we going to still wait and see if we officially close the schools tomorrow? Yes, we do know that there's going to be a decision point that's made later on this afternoon. Uh, our governor is going to receive a brief directly from National Weather Service based off of the latest advisory this afternoon at 2 p.m. Um, also, there will be some different decision points after that. So I would just advise, please stay tuned to any changes on Department of Education. Um, what is the, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, you can finish, my bad. And for the remainder of the day, they still stick with their uh, early closure for today. But for tomorrow, we'll have more information by this afternoon. What are the thoughts from the National Weather Service? 45 mile, 45 mile per hour winds, gusts of 45 mile per hour winds. Is that something that we should take extra precautions and still close? Well, uh, that's a hard answer, but uh, what I would suggest people uh, should keep in mind is look around your yards. Uh, the, the trends are suggestive of a weaker uh, storm passing us, uh, a weaker depression. And, uh, but the most important thing to focus on is look around your yards. Do you have any lightweight objects that could uh, go flying and such winds? Uh, we will be adjusting the forecast accordingly, uh, working closely with Joint Typhoon Warning Center um, and bringing, uh, right now the trends look like the, the, the winds will probably subside a little bit, uh, but we should all be very, very prepared uh, to respond uh, in case those uh, stronger gusts do occur. Because uh, even if it's not sustained winds, those stronger gusts will have repercussions, uh, at least on a, uh, on a personal level uh, with objects in the yards and the streets. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll wait till it goes around. Thank you so much. Up next, I see Marie Cruz, SDC. Okay, I'm hearing none. I'm going to go ahead and proceed. Steve Limtiaco, PDN. Uh, yes, thanks. I had a question for Brandon about just the outlook for this uh, typhoon season. Uh, so based on the atmospheric conditions, are we more likely to see this, this sort of activity coming our way over the next several months? Well, we, uh, we are approaching that time of year where we do see that, uh, that climatological increase in tropical cyclones. So for, for Guam, uh, we, we look at September through November as that peak season. Uh, granted, we can get the tropical cyclones any time of the year, but September through November is, is the peak season. Now, uh, as we address 2021 uh, specifically, uh, we've just come off of a busy monsoon pattern uh, that developed well to the northwest of, of uh, the Marianas. And, and I believe that monsoon pattern that lasted for about four weeks, it, it did generate uh, six or seven tropical cyclones. Most of them were relatively weak. I think one or two achieved a typhoon status uh, close to Japan. Uh, but again, that whole monsoon feature was much to the northwest of the Marianas. Uh, for, for the Marianas, uh, the concern would be for the monsoon trough to develop over uh, Micronesia uh, near Chuk, 
or even a little bit farther east toward Pompeii or Koshirai. Uh, with the ENSO neutral pattern, that is a significantly less risk of tropical cyclones than in the El Nino year, like what we saw in 2015. Uh, but uh, we're, we're watching for the next monsoon pattern to develop probably it could be another two to four weeks before we start seeing that signal in the long range computer models. Uh, but it is something that we're always on the lookout for and, uh, and we're ready to communicate that with the public. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Brandon. Thank you, Steve. We'll go ahead and move on with uh, KUAM. So I'm not too sure if it's going to be Tyler or Media Stream. Hi, this is for uh, anyone that can answer um, from the JIC or governor's office rep. So based on the NWS forecast, um, the recommendation was for the governor to stay, uh, to keep the island in condition of readiness three. So at this point, are we looking at not opening the shelters? Thank you so much, Tyler. I know that uh, earlier I did mention there's going to be a decision point that'll be made later on this afternoon. The governor will be receiving a brief uh, at the 2 p.m. after the 2 p.m. advisory from National Weather Service. From there, there are a lot of uh, decision points will be made. So I would just advise to please stand by as we get more information through this afternoon. Okay, thank you, Jenna. And then I just had one more question uh, for Brandon. So if you could just explain again um, in layman's terms, um, so based on the 11 a.m. bulletin, is 16W looking at being a tropical depression when it makes its closest point of approach on Tuesday midday? That is correct. We're still looking at the 16 being a tropical depression uh, of about uh, 30, 30 mile per hour winds as it passes mid um, through the Marianas midday Tuesday. Okay, thank you very much. You. Up next, we have Phil Leon Guerrero. Thank you very much, Jenna. Um, my first question uh, for the weather service is, can, can we um, just kind of outline uh, maybe the, the most major developments that happened overnight that kind of inform the, the intensity track that we, we've got going on right now? Absolutely. So. The, the changes overnight is, is we did not see any signs of uh, improved organization. So what we, what we look for to signify intensification is continued sustained thunderstorms and uh, heavy showers near the center of the circulation. Uh, they did not really transpire overnight. Uh, we saw some showers and thunderstorms to the north of the center of the circulation. Uh, and, but otherwise, those have largely uh, started to dissipate uh, late this morning into midday today. And so that ultimately uh, suggests uh, 16 is not intensifying and it will result in a longer wait until 16 does uh, intensify and, and most likely west of the Marianas. And has that adjusted your um, forecast as far as what the worst conditions that we're going to be feeling uh, have been? Are there any kind of noticeable changes in, in that? That Well, we are adjusting our forecast a little bit downward. Uh, this morning's forecast, uh, we did see the, the overall wind expectations. Uh, the wind forecasts have come down a little bit since uh, yesterday, uh, especially since the, the forecast track is, is holding off that intensification until west of the Marianas. So we're going to probably see with this afternoon's forecast package, uh, those overall winds and the expectations are going to come down a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Uh, but still there's uh, the potential for heavy showers and thunderstorms, uh, especially uh, north of the center of 16. Thank, thanks, Brandon. Um, I, I have a, a question for, I guess, someone in the JIC or, or the um, administration. Uh, can, can we just outline, uh, you know, we went through yesterday with some of the uh, preparations that you guys are going through following the uh, emergency management plan. Uh, I'm just wondering if maybe you could outline areas that DPW has cleared debris from um, or, or other kind of preparatory actions that, that we can highlight that the government of Guam has conducted. Uh, 
until I switch. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes, is that you, Jenna? I can hear you. Yes, thank you. I have the different response activity coordinators to include the Council of Guam, Department of Education, as well as the Department of Public Works. There's still some discussion that's happening regarding there's going to be a for I'm sorry, Jenny, you're, you're cutting in and out. Can, can we try again? Just um, like for take, take for instance, a, an agency like DPW, can you outline for us what villages they've already visited to try and clear debris to help alleviate the chances of flooding that were outlined um, in our heavy weather brief yesterday? Sorry, I may have cut off. I hope you heard me, Phil. Uh, no, sorry, Jenna. Um, yeah, so I, I was just repeating my question, maybe just more if, even if you could just kind of outline where DPW was between yesterday and, and today trying to clear debris to help with the flooding risk. I'm so sorry, Phil. I'm having um, issues with my sound on my end, but can you hear me clearly? Yeah, that, that sounds better, Jenna. Okay, on our end, we're working closely with Department of Public Health and our other response activity coordinators with Department of Education, as well as Mayor's Council of Guam uh, to assess any locations that are needed. We do know that Department of Public Health, I'm sorry, Department of Public Works advised that they're prepared to stage heavy equipment in areas that can expect some of those heavier flooding areas. Um, so again, it's just really asking the assistance of the community to prepare on their end as well. Although the possibility of damaging winds are becoming less likely, there's still that potential for a heavy rainfall. And we've all seen what a heavy rain event can do to Guam. So we're, we're asking the community to start making those preparations now for those that are living in flood prone areas to take action while they can. Uh, thanks, Jenna. But, but just to clarify real quick, and then I'll, I'll uh, have another colleague ask questions. Have there been any specific areas that DPW has cleared of debris to address the risk of flooding? And can you give us a couple of examples of those areas if there have been? Not at this time, but they are prepared to stage or move their equipment if needed through today. Okay, thanks, Jenna. Okay, thank you. We'll circle back around. We did have Holly Suva. Did you have any additional questions? Thing is, uh... We're told that there are well-known areas that need to be looked at for flooding. Uh, for the general public, where are these well-known areas so that they uh, specifically know that uh, DPW will be coming around uh, assessing those areas? We can help compile that list through the Joint Information Center to get that information out. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, Mr. Brandon, uh, this this tropical depression would have been named right uh, you had a name you had a name um selected but it looks like we're not going to be naming this depression that name will be given to the next storm that is correct so uh as long as this storm is in existence uh has continued to be uh assessed as a tropical depression uh as by the joint uh japan meteorological agency uh it's going to be watched as soon as it reaches a tropical storm. If it does, uh, JMA uh, will append the name Omice. Now, if uh, 16W uh, goes on to just dissipate and just does not ever intensify, uh, then both agencies, Joint Typhoon Warning Center and JMA, will, will effectively just call it done. And then the next tropical cyclone 
that uh, reaches uh, tropical storm intensity of 39 miles per hour, that will uh, receive the name of Omice. It could be next week, it could be next month. Um, but uh, yes, the, the next time, the next West Pacific storm becomes a tropical storm uh, as uh, assessed by JMA, that will get the name Omice. How does the process work in naming? Like, is it just somebody in the office comes up with it and you, and you vote? I, I think that was the, maybe the case decades ago. Uh, but uh, nowadays, uh, it's a collaboration with the World Meteorological or Organization. And so all the countries uh, across the, the West Pacific, including Southeast Asia, um, they have uh, the, the opportunity to contribute a, 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 a list of names uh, with the local languages. So the U.S. is one of the participants. And uh, with the U.S. affiliated Pacific, uh, Pacific Islands, uh, the U.S. has names uh, come with Chamorro backgrounds, uh, Marshallese, uh, Micronesian uh, uh, words, uh, could refer to flowers or streams, uh, or uh, as in the case of a mice, uh, wandering around. Um, so every country uh, contributes several names. Uh, every year there is then a conference and, and they, the different countries consider those names. And just to make sure while one word might, uh, a word might mean flower in Vietnamese to make sure it's not vulgar in another language. So the, the object is to avoid those unfortunate situations. And then when all the committee members have agreed, uh, those are the new, the, new, the new names. So there's actually a hundred names that comprise the list. Uh, so it's a little bit different from the East Pacific, uh, Central East Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean, where you just have an A through Z a list of names, and, and then they just kind of have a different list every year. Um, but uh, a name is uh, is uh, retired uh, once a storm by that name has caused uh, considerable uh, damage or uh, loss of life and property, and uh, and that was the case with Super Typhoon U2. Thank you for the information. And then again, Miss Jenna, if if. Uh, the 2 p.m. advisory meeting happens. If we could, we get that information to those well-known areas to pass on to the public. Yes, of course, we'll be able to get that to you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, going back around, we have uh, Steve Lemtiaco up next. Did you have any further questions? Uh, no, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you. And back to Tyler with KOAM. Any further questions? Hi, Jenna. Yes, uh, we. Or I'm sorry. Um, I guess I'll just ask this anyways. Um, just wanted to know if you can give us a definitive answer about the situation of uh, the schools. Are they going to, are we expected to, for schools to be open tomorrow? Not at this time, as previously mentioned, this afternoon we'll have more information after the 2 p.m. brief. We'll be able okay, to get that information you. out to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, that concludes our round of questions. I just wanna take a minute to thank our media partners for getting our information out to the public. We appreciate all of the efforts on your end. So thank you so much. And big thank you to Brandon from National Weather Service uh, giving us that great update. So please stay tuned to the Joint Information Center. We'll be issuing more information this afternoon. Thank you. This concludes our brief. <laughs>